everybody. My name is Katherine Harrington. I'm the president and CEO of the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce, and we are so excited to be here today. We are here with Jessica Richter, and Jessica is a partner with BKD in the West Des Moines office, the Iowa office. West Des Moines is the best Des Moines, right, Jessica? There you go. <laughs> and uh, Jessica has an incredible report. BKD oh. just did a report called the state of the nonprofit sector. And they really dug deep into information since COVID that has affected the nonprofit sector across the country. And there is so much great information here and uh, really excited to talk to Jessica a day today about this study. So, so Jessica, tell us a little bit about you as partner of BKD first, and then we'll dig into the uh, information. All right. Sounds good, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me today. So as you said, I'm a partner here in the West Des Moines office of BKD, um, and I'm actually our local nonprofit industry leader in the office. And so work with a lot of nonprofits, um, been in public accounting for, gosh, over 20 years now. Make me age me a little bit, but uh, love what I do and really serving the industry and um, just helping people, you know, tell their story and, and get, the, you know, through the financial statements. So um the nonprofit study, you know, we really, we've been doing something like this on the higher ed side for a few years and really focusing specifically on higher education. But with everything that's gone on in the last, you know, year, a little bit longer, um, thought it was time, you know, let's, let's really get a pulse on the nonprofit industry as a whole. Things have just changed so much. And so um, some of our thought leadership got together and said, you know, let's, let's do this. We did it by a survey. Um, so everyone that responded was voluntary. Uh, we had about 319 organizations from across the country that participated, which was just really an excellent response. And really, we just reached out over social media and different channels and tried to um, ask people to participate and answer a few questions. I know there's lots of surveys and lots of things like that that go on. So uh, we tried to keep it minimal, but yet yeah, get the most impact from the data that we could, that we could gather. Well, this survey has so much great information, and especially with COVID, obviously all businesses, nonprofit or for-profit have been changed. Uh, you know, some to the upside and some to the downside, right? So, um, but this is so interesting. So maybe spotlight for us some of the big takeaways that, that you found particularly interesting. Definitely. So some of the things, you know, I think that we thought were probably happening, but just definitely confirmed is nearly 90% of all um, organizations that responded said they've altered their service delivery in some kind of fashion, which makes sense given COVID. But at the same time, they've seen nearly 70% of them saw a decrease in revenues. And so it's like, how do you make all those changes and do all those alterations, but yet you don't have as many resources available to you. And so that's been a really big challenge um, that I found really interesting. Also about 29% indicated that they do plan to actually eliminate some of their programs and uh, services as they move forward, simply I'm sure because of a result of that lack of funding, changing delivery mechanisms, maybe some haven't figured out how to alter and be able to still perform and give their services, you know, in the current environment that we're in, um, a lot of things have changed. And so I think those, those are some of the real big highlights we saw. Um, you know, and other people, there were some comments in there too that people said, well, we're, we're kind of in a bit of a bubble right now because of PPP and CARES Act and some of the support there, but how do we go forward? What do we do? And are the donors going to be there when this is all over? And how do we do that? And can we re, you know, kind of boost back up charges for services? Charges for services took a big hit in this too, because people weren't able to pay for the services that maybe they have before from these nonprofit organizations. And so, you know, those are some of the big things that I think are super impactful, um, you know, from the study and the information that was in there. Yeah, and it's interesting how you broke it down too by nonprofits, because there's so many broad nonprofits, right? right? And so tell us a little bit about those sectors within the nonprofit world and who maybe is doing better than others right now? Cause that, that varies a lot too. So tell us about that. It does. So across the board um, through the group that we surveyed about 21% or so were in a higher educa education as a whole, whether that's private schools, higher education, you know, any kind of mix within there. We had about 20% were in like the health and human services area or excuse me, health area. 
human services was about 18%. And then the rest of it was more the arts and public benefits, membership organizations, things of that nature. So, um, you know, your membership organizations were doing mostly okay, you know, um, and, and so they were kind of moving ahead. Education obviously took a heck of a hit. They're struggling. Um, that, interestingly enough, was one of the organizations that reported having the fewest cash reserves to help them weather the storm. And so um, it all the more supports some of the Higher Education Relief Act and um, funding that was available through the CARES Act and some of those things, as well as the PPP. Um, you know, health services, obviously high demand. There's, you know, that's what we're in right now. We're in a health crisis. And so those folks have been really asked to step up. And um, again, some of the funding mechanisms and that have helped bolster them through that. But they also seem a little bit more uh, prepared from a cash reserve perspective than maybe some of the other subsectors. And the arts, you know, they've had to really struggle. Um, even if they've been able to reopen, they haven't really had the capacity because they've had to social distance, they've had to see people in pods or separate. And so they just can't offer or bring in as many individuals um, for performances if they're even allowed to open. Um, the new shuttered venues grants and things that came out of the recent um, legislation um, will help, um, but it's not gonna fix everything, right? Like any of this is. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you're right, the CARES Act, some of these grants and people are leaning really heavily on those. Um, absolutely. And it's interesting, the healthcare sector too, you know, a lot of those folks didn't go to their screenings like the healthcare industry really relies on. And so, yeah, there, that was uh, quite a disruption for our healthcare, uh, healthcare industry. So what surprised you the most, I think, of this study? Were there some big surprises there that that uh, you found? Yeah, I think the, the decline in programs and services, so the, the services that people pay nonprofits for, and you just mentioned it, um, people are ignoring normal healthcare or um, whether that's mental health services or screenings or basic fundamental care that, you know, maybe they didn't have a primary care and they relied on some of these other nonprofits to help, you know, kind of fill that need, but there's still a charge for services involved. Nobody's doing that stuff right now. Everyone's afraid to even leave their homes in some cases. And so um, I was really surprised at how much people are ignoring those types of things um, and just and just not you know, doing that. It was, it was really quite a surprise. Yeah, absolutely. So, so BKD, you, you have a lot of support services for the nonprofit industry, obviously. Um, so what can people uh, do as they're needing help? How, uh, how can they turn to BKD for some of this support during this uh, crazy time? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a lot of different services we offer. Um, nonprofit is one of our core industries that we serve here at BKD. And so we've got folks that help with nonprofit advisory services, whether it's helping governance understand how to manage through this, but also looking at PPP and looking at loan forgiveness. Many organizations got the first round, but they maybe haven't gone through the forgiveness process, which can be a little tricky in understanding the forms. Um, so we've got specific services we've designed to help um, organizations get through that, as well as now go get PPP too, and then same thing, get through that forgiveness process. We also have folks to help with employee retention credit, looking at whether you qualify, how to get those, um, just lots of different things there. And then of course, all your traditional, you know, accounting, audit, tax services, um, we've got all those too. Um, and really together, um, pretty much anything you could be looking for, I think, I think we can help. I love it. Well, thanks for all that help and support. This is a crazy time for so many organizations and. And there are so many nonprofits in Iowa. You know, I don't, I don't know if there's a number, uh, if we can, you know, put a number on it. But I, you know, we work closely with so many of them, doing great, great work in our communities, making change, uh, making a difference, right, making life better for everybody. So. Um, so this information is really helpful and I think goes to the point where, you know, these folks need help, they need support and, uh, and th thanks for putting the data around that. So, you know, we could, we could assume they need support, but thanks for, you know, putting numbers to that. So is there anything, la any last takeaways that you think would be really important for us to, to know today? 
Well, you mentioned, you know, the number of nonprofits. Um, we've pulled some information and within just a 50 mile radius of the Des Moines metropolitan area, there are almost 500 nonprofits um, organized. Now, some are operating, some are not, but that just shows you how many there are. And when you think nonprofit, it's not just, um, you know, someone who provides like the food bank or something like that. There's so many other healthcare or mental health care or other types of, they might be a service organization, but they are a nonprofit and they're really just trying to better the community. And so they're everywhere you turn, they employ individuals, they have economic impact in the community. And so they're really important to the community as a whole. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, well, as a nonprofit ourselves, we, we understand that uh, this has been a different time. You know, it's been a challenging time, um, but programming, like you said, is really critical and, and keeping that up. Uh, we've actually kind of doubled our programming. We, we did not retract. We did the opposite, which, uh, which we really felt like we had to help support our community right now, especially. So, um, so we're proud to be able to do that. And and, uh, and running running well, so, so that's good. But uh, Jessica, thanks so much for all this information. And uh, we'll provide a link for the greater details so people can dig in and, and read more. And we uh, really appreciate everybody being here today. And thanks for this uh, great knowledge, really appreciate it. Absolutely, and just in case we didn't say it already, it is a complimentary study. So there is no charge, um, you can download it for free. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thanks, Jessica. Thank you for being a highly valued West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce member. And I look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Catherine. Thanks, Jessica. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.